saved. Jesus saves. I will tell you, my friends, what will, I'm going to tell you what will revolutionize our churches. Fall in love with Jesus again. You say, Pastor, it's been a long time since I shared my faith. It's been a long time since I told them. You know what? If you just fall in love with Jesus again, if we would just remember what it was like when we were lost, I'm going to tell you that passion, that energy, that enthusiasm, why you couldn't keep us quiet for Jesus. You say, how does that happen? I, I don't know. I, I just know for me, I, I, I think back what it was like bef- before Jesus. And remember, I didn't do anything good. It wasn't my talent, my ability, my personality. It's only by His grace He stepped down and changed my life. I I just think back what it used to be like. You know, one of my favorite movies, I'm going to close with this little clip. One of my favorite movies is a movie called The Rookie. It came out in 1999. Many of you probably saw it. It's a true story. It's what I love about it. A pitcher named Jimmy Morrison. Let me just set it up for you briefly. Jimmy was a thriving pitcher, and then he had a a terrible injury to his arm. So he got out of it. He didn't realize he he wasn't going to make it, and he, he began teaching in a local high school. Through the process, he, the, the kids convinced him to try out for the pros again. But he was a little bit older. And he said, well, I'll give it a shot. And here he is traveling on the bus with all these youngsters, these young pups. And, you know, he's just kind of worn out. He doesn't feel like he's going to make it. So he's discouraged. He says, I'm just going to give up on my dream. And so he calls his wife, goes into his manager and tells him, I'm, I'm quitting. Calls his wife and says, hey, I'm through riding these old buses all night long. I'm not going to make it. I'm too old. It's not going to happen for me. I'm just going to give up. And she says, that's fine. Come home. And what happens is he walks over after this conversation and he comes upon a little league baseball game. And he's standing at this fence. I want you to see this. This It's a powerful moment. Listen to me now. He remembers what it was like when he first started playing baseball. He remembers the joy. You just played for the love of the game. It wasn't about trying to make it to the big leagues. You just, you just loved the game and wanted to play. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to see that fire, that passion come back in his life. So if you would, look to the screen. Check this out. You know what we get to do today, Brooks? We get to play baseball. Church, you know what we get to do? We get to share Jesus. Would you pray with me? Our heads are bowed just for a moment. I'll be very clear, very simple about this response time. Our pastor is going to be here and the staff to help you today. I want to say to you, first of all, if you don't have a real relationship with a real God, you've got religion, but you don't have a redeemer. <laughs> you've got church membership, but you don't have Christ. And I want to tell you today, my friend, aren't you tired of just going through the motions? I can't think of a better day to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ than on a celebration of 200 years of ministry of this church. You say, well, Pastor, I'm not sure how to do that. That's why our staff, our pastors here. All you have to say is, I need Jesus. That's all you have to say. They'll know exactly what you mean, my friend. They can take the Bible and show you how to repent of your sin and make Jesus Christ your Lord. And I'm going to tell you, my friend, your life will never be the same. Would you do that? Maybe God is leading you to join this church. I'm going to tell you, if you live in this area, I can't think of a better place to roll up your sleeves and get busy for the kingdom of God. You say, but I don't know how to join. What does that mean? I our, our staff, our pastor will help you with that. Just come and simply say, hey, I, I want to join. I, I, what, what better time to join than on the celebration of 200 years? Come on, my friends. You've only got one life. 
You're not going to make any difference sitting on the sidelines of life. You've got to get involved. Now's the time. Then I want to say to you, my friends, as you embark on the next 200 years of ministry, I wonder if this morning some of you wouldn't come to the altar and say, God, I pray you'd make this a soul-winning station for Jesus Christ. Some of you would come and maybe get on your knees and say, Lord, I, I want to be alert to the opportunities that you bring my way in the school, in the neighborhood, in the marketplace. And Lord, here's my life. I give it to you in a fresh way. Here's my heart, Lord. Use me, God, use me. And I want to tell you, this altar is going to be open for the next little while. They're going to sing for us. And I wonder if you wouldn't come and just kind of seal that deal right down front. God, use me to share the good news of Jesus. I'm not just going to go through life and take up space and breathe there. I want my life to count for Jesus. If you want to talk or pray with our pastor or staff, they'll be here. Maybe you just want to come and kneel at the altar by yourself with a friend. Lord, I pray this morning. Oh, God, Holy Spirit, I pray for a holy freedom to respond. I pray you'd burden us down with the lostness of people all around us. God, raise up some men and women, some young people, and say, Lord, here am I. Use me. God, I pray that we respond to your voice this morning. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. They'll sing for us. Our pastor's here. This altar is open, my friend. I'm asking you to come. Respond to his voice this morning.